Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, study of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Good morning. Good to be here with everybody. I want to give a big shout out to everybody who was commenting and uh, sharing that video that I collaborated with Rich Roll from. It makes a big difference, you know. This is how they, this uh, social media works, you know, it gets spread around and the algorithms see, oh, this is good. I'll, I'll push it more. And uh, it's our little way um, of just like, spreading the message of the Bhagavatam around. Um, so yeah, if you didn't go, go to my Instagram account, comment on it and um, share the video on your, on your uh, story page. How are you, Kostuba? I'm doing good, Raghunath. I listened to the interview. I really enjoyed it yesterday. Thanks. Thanks. Which role? Yeah, it was a good. It was, he's a good interview, isn't he? He's a deep guy. Mm-hmm. You could tell these people have been to through the twelve steps. They've just got a depth of realizations. Yeah, I'd like you, to. Uh, yeah, uh, I gave Jiva G and the Bhakti Recovery Group a shout out at the end. There, did you hear that? I did. The only thing he failed to do. <laughs> I know. I mentioned <laughs> the, the podcast. The podcast. He mentioned the podcast right out of the gates. We just forget to mention the name of the, the podcast. The name of the podcast. The little name of the podcast. I was sitting there like, say its name. Say, say its, its name. name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was bad. <laughs> I mean, right out of the gate, you started talking about right the, the podcast. It's like, oh, this well, is Well, I great. just said, hey, good, you do this podcast. It's so good. And he goes, yeah, well, you do your podcast every day. I was like, yes, I do the unnamed <laughs> podcast every day. <laughs> That just, just a moment ago, you're speaking like the master of algorithms. <laughs> like <laughs> right there, you probably flew <laughs> like thousands, thousands. Of hits. thousands. Well, well no, but it's, but it's... you did great. I don't want to, you did you did well. But, you Thank know, you. part of Mama's in there. It's giving remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. You know, you know that's why whenever I have to give a class, when I pre- when I prepare for it, it just this is my way of doing it. Yeah. When I prepare for, prepare for it, it doesn't come out good. It comes out forced and contrived. But mm-hmm. if I just pray right before to previous masters and say, you know what? Speak through me. I've got no intelligence. Just talk through me. And I'm, I've been So which one did you do this time? For that one, I, uh, I said speak through me. I didn't prepare to say anything. So it's God's fault that you didn't mention the name of the podcast. No, it's, it's the previous acharyas. They have acharyas. they have a plan, Kastuba. <laughs> the previous acharyas have a plan. Okay, then I have to accept it. <laughs> um, how are you doing? I'm okay. doing wonderful. Me and Mara slept outside yesterday under the stars. It was get great. out. It's a little early in the season for that. You know okay, what? Was, right. What was your day? It was. Oh, it was great. It was a little chilly, but you know we had warm sleeping bags, so. You wake up very refreshed. Up. Yeah, it felt great. I slept solid. Yeah. It's like yeah. even to just wake up and see these like massive trees, kind of the canopy of trees. It, it's mm. like, it's powerful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So that was a nice way to start my, start my back time at the farm. 
I got a, I got a message from uh, Luke Harmon, one of our regular Zoomers or one of our regular others, and he was like, "Yeah, I went camping yesterday with my family." I was like, "I want to go camping," so we just. Oh, and then Mara made me this incredible meal outside. Look I just built that. a fire, and she just threw. A, she was just grilling vegetables. Out, she, she like dug a hole pitch. and made a fire and everything. Yeah, we just pitched and pitched it. We just got a like a grill and just put it over some logs, and just she grilled me zucchinis and peppers and eggplant. eggplant. Grilled those for for the Lord first, and then offered them. We did. Don't forget. Well, yeah, that. that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Are you trying to instruct me in my barbecue? No, barbecue. I'm just saying she's 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 a devotee of Krishna first, Raghunath. Her devotion for you is there also, but when she cooks, she cooks for Krishna. Yeah, that's just the way that you want it, right? Yeah, cook for Krishna. I like the Krishna's <laughs> barbecued remnants. There's an extra challenge of cooking <laughs> for Krishna in the dark because yeah. after sunset. Too. Yeah, it was it was pitch black. It was it was like late. Really? It was like eight thirty at you night. Guys really getting into the camping thing. <clears throat> I think I'm going to spend a lot of time sleeping outside this year. Okay. I think it's just healthy for me. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's keep this moving right now. Let's keep this moving here. All right, sir. You we have, have some announcements from Mary? Yeah. yeah. Uh, back to your recovery group meetings online. The men meet at noon and the women meet at 2 p.m. today. And we also have BRG meetings in person in Nashville and Alachua. And BRG... Wisdom and Sages with Italy. Wisdom of the Sages of Italy, Jiva G is going to be there. Oh, okay. <clears throat> She's going to be there doing BRG meetings. So if you're coming to Italy, that's happening. It looks like people are now it's really shaping up into something really wonderful in Italy. If you haven't signed up for it and you want to go, wisdomofthesages.com slash events that tells it all. Maybe we ought to sleep outside yeah. when we go to Italy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will. Okay. Yeah. It's not buggy either at all. I thought it was going to be buggy. It wasn't buggy at all. No. Because now the time you get these mayflies and they just <laughs> they're like they're like they're uh, like it just sounds so good until the jihadist, bugs come out, right? Jihadist bugs that are coming like <laughs> right for your right under your eyelid. Like they have nothing to lose. Just take out his eyeball. That's what they they go right under there. But no, it was very very pleasant. It was pleasant. Okay. All right, Rogan. All right, so uh, here's Money. another for today. It's from Frederick Nietzsche. Yeah, I think it's. I think it. I looked up the pronunciation. Oh, really? How do you? I've always said Nietzsche. 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 Frederick Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche. The surest way to corrupt. The surest way to corrupt a youth. Ask. Find out how he died. Did he lose his mind? Uh, did he kill himself? I think. Right. Yeah, it's one of these like yeah. existentialists who cannot. They're too too smart for the material world, yet not smart enough to embrace the spiritual world. Oh, you know what I mean? It's just like when you get when you get too smart, the whole material world is like this is ridiculous. I'm just crazy. When you see through the facade, here. but you don't have a positive alternative, it's very That's depressing. It. That's it. You don't have a positive alternative. Then you just say, "This is this is all a bunch of crap." No, he um. Let's see. In 1889, at age 44, he suffered a collapse and afterward a complete loss of mental faculties. Oh, lost his mind. With paralysis and probably vascular dementia. He lived his oh. remaining years in the care of his mother until her death and then with his sister. He died in 1900 after experiencing pneumonia and multiple strokes. Oh, boy, rough. Yeah. Uh, hopefully he grew through it somehow. He did hate God, I think. No, 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 no. No, I mean, you're, you're. If you're saying that based off of the God is dead thing, yeah, didn't he proclaim God is dead? But he didn't proclaim it like, like it wasn't like an anti-God message. It was almost like we've. I think if you read it in context, he's saying like we killed God, like with our horrible thinking and way of living and so. And you know, it, it was almost like a lament that God is dead. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't pick up on that. There was well, a did song. you ever read it? Okay, yeah. I did it. I did it. Okay, well, then you know what? Because there was a on. punk song written called God is Dead when okay. I was young. And it was one of the first you know, bands I was got into. That Jesse Mullins band, Heart Attack. And they had the song, God is Dead, God is Dead. I was like, I can't believe I'm singing along with this song. I, I was I was, I was, was God, God loving even as, as a teenager. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to sing this song, but it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> they just did a benefit for him, huh? Yeah. I think it was just like last weekend. Yeah. 
because he had some kind of a some some odd kind of disease or something like that where he became paralyzed. Is he okay? Tough. This world is tough. The world is tough. And you know, we're at that age where it's getting tougher. Where people are just dropping or people are getting this or that. Yeah. As you get older, the picture gets a little dimmer. It does. It's we like it's urgent. Uplifting. While we're healthy, let's get serious about our spiritual life. What do you say? While we're really think. healthy. So what does Nietzsche have to say in any case? Say it again. God, he said God is dead. And now the body's come. <laughs> and besides, no, no, no. The he surest said, way. The surest way to corrupt a youth is to instruct him to hold in higher esteem those who think alike than those who think differently. Interesting. Th is this getting towards like uh, uh, the benefits of critical thinking and critical debate? Which well, I think certainly it, it that's does. where I went with it. What did you go? What did you go? Well, I, I, I definitely that's there, and I think definitely the, like for instance you and I, and the kind of the scene that we kind of came up in this was very much you know, this is very consistent i think with the way that we were thinking right it's like it, no we can't we just can't allow ourselves to just think like the common people we got to think in different ways we got to try to see the world in different ways we got to approach it in a different way and thus we hung out with a bunch of eclectic you know misfits of sorts kind of you know freaks of different yeah. sorts yeah yeah um but I, th but the way that I was relating to this, particularly in relation to what we're reading right now, is the spiritual viewpoint is actually a radically different type of thinking. It's 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 almost entirely counter the materialistic thought. I mean, you could say it is, you know. Mm -hmm. So where we're kind of the common person is raised with certain assumptions. You know, um, how I'm going to find happiness in this world is going to come through the acquisition of the things that give happiness. And the things that give happiness are A, B, C, D, E, and F, you know. And then so go out and get the, the, the spouse and the home. Check. Check. And, you know, yeah, like, you know, and the, you know, status symbols of different sorts and sense gratificatory, you know, th things that are out there. You have to accumulate them. To be successful, you're going to have to get the money to accumulate them. So now you're going to need to get the right kind of occupation. You pursue this and the formula adds up. You know, you get the money, you get the things, you get the happiness. Hmm. And the spiritual viewpoint is like an entirely different thing. Oh, the happiness doesn't lie outside. It actually lies within. That's like entirely different way of thinking, hmm. right? And the surest way that we become corrupted is to say, just think like everybody else is thinking. You actually have to think in a way that's, you have to go, in one sense, completely against the grain, <laughs> you know, <laughs> completely. And, and, and if we're hearing these messages and we're struggling, we're saying like, I don't know, that's going against the grain. Mm -hmm. You know what? Open yourself up to seeing the world in a completely, from a completely different angle. And maybe, just maybe, <laughs> You know, that's the one that actually works because it seems like this other one doesn't work so well. You know, it, it the, the, Prahlad's going to be pushing that message. You know, don't be afraid to turn the whole thing upside down and see what it looks. This is what you do with like a company from what I understand. I'm not like a business guy or anything like that. Right. But, you know, like if they have a company and they're trying this and they're trying that, we, we, you know what? We got to bring in a new guy. Behind. Yeah, we bring in a new guy that's going to turn shake this, this thing upside down. Shake, shake this whole up. thing up. Shake it up. Yeah. So maybe that's what we need to do with our own lives, with our own um, thinking. Shake hmm. it up a bit. Yeah, you know, this is my common phrase of, what's my common phrase it has to do? Oh, makes no material sense. Sometimes it seems right. the thing the spiritualists are doing, they don't make any sense at all to a person engaged in material life. And people don't get it. People don't get, uh, probably a lot of people listening to the show, your family is like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? Why would you make that choice? Why would you go there? Why, you know, a, a yoga retreat, a pilgrimage, you know, why would you give up, you know, you know, a lot of people become, veg we got into vegetarianism or veganism and they're like, wow. why? We cook so well. You know, Mara had a whole business of cooking meat, a successful business. She I'm shook it up. She, she shook it up. It she just down. changed. No, and I'm sure... Mara, did you get pushback from friends and loved ones and clients? Yeah, yeah. Friends? 
They said, um, what the hell are you doing, Mara? Why? Are you going to sabotage your business? It's upstate New York. Who's going to who's going to eat tofu and bird seeds? I was careful <laughs> about I made it sort of clear that I wasn't as, asking for advice or opinions. Oh. That I wasn't asking advice or <laughs> That's opinions. That's good. Because she didn't want to no. be corrupted. Right? No unsolicited advice, please. Yeah. It's good. What did your dad say? What did Papa Tony say? Papa Tony trusted in it, actually. You know, he was vegetarian before that, too. And he knew, you know, he always appreciated all of the vegetarian cooking. So. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. The food is in the tasting right there. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't make material sense from the bottom line, financial bottom line, from, you know, what friends and family are thinking. You know, with this, you know, Mara in the old days, she used to come over here every morning, 5 a.m. <laughs> that means you were up at four. It doesn't make any material sense whatsoever. A lot of you guys are on Zoom. You're sitting in front of a, a computer for an hour every morning and uh, it makes no material sense. Yeah. So just maybe the answer lies in looking at it in a completely different way. You know, it's like the Seinfeld one where George, you know, his whole life is just not, you know, disappointing. Okay, do, that <laughs> is a great episode. Do the opposite. Do the do, opposite. Everything the exact opposite. He goes, he's trying to pick up a girl. George, George Costanza, is, who are you? I am the opposite of every woman you've ever dated, of every man you've ever dated. You know, my name is George. I'm unemployed. I live with I my live mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Guys, oh. <laughs> Whatever you go... Yeah, Jerry was like, go up and say something to her. What am I going to say? I'm... He goes, just, say, just the say the opposite of what you're going to say. <laughs> that is so true. It, and it's like a lot of the things that we do just don't make any sense. It's the but opposite of sense. Complete, sense. complete spiritual sense. Yeah. Huh, maybe that's our message today. Do the opposite. Do the opposite. Flip it. Flip it. Shake it up. Okay, so let's see what... Um, what does that have to do with is. our young friend... Prahlad? Prahlad. We're going to find out today on the show in a few minutes after these mantras. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayvana rotamam divim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam dirayat. Before we sign the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan and to Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. To Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Adreshu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloki Bhakti Rabhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated in loving service to the Supreme Lord, whose praise with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Ajnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmudatam Yena Tazmay Shri Gurave Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes to the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. You, you know what I take comfort in, Ragana? Take some joy in? Um, what? That those mantras that we just chanted, you yeah. could go back thousands of years. You could go climb up into the hills in the Himalayas mm. and you'd find sages chanting those exact mantras. Yeah. You Thousands find of years ago. Yeah. And, and, and if we go back to those same places or other places in the world, but let's say those places, thousands of years from now, yeah, you can find people doing the exact same thing. You can find them on YouTube. <laughs> also. Oh, <that's> another, okay. <laughs> no, because, no, because you know why? Because... <laughs> You know that big in the eighties and like nineteen ninety, there was that big Maha. They've made Mahabharat into a serial on TV, where oh, yeah. all of India, if you were in India at that time, all of India would just shut down <laughs> the parliament, businesses, and because no one had TVs back then, only like one guy would have a TV on the block, and everyone would just gather around and watch the Mahabharat. And yeah, I think it would start with Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chayva Narotamam. Mm. Yes, Google yeah, YouTube, they, YouTube that for fun, people. These don't; these are eternal. They don't burn out. They don't. They aren't popular for a little while and then they disappear. These keep going on. Remember, we did that uh, thing about Kiss, and Kiss was the band. Kiss was uh, getting some kind of hologram kind of show concert thing they were doing or something like that, right? Oh yeah, what was it? Yeah, and they're like, "No, we are 
immortal or something. <laughs> no, you're not. People <laughs> can completely forget about your punk band. <laughs> like, you're forgettable. <laughs> yeah. You're much, you're it's really forgettable. Short matter of time and nobody's yeah. ever going to think of you. And you're, I mean, they're sort of like uh, the black cougars, you know, they sometimes go become unmanifest and then manifest again. It depends. Sometimes they say animals are extinct and they just actually are not extinct. They just get out of the public view. Sometimes these mantras will appear to disappear and then they'll resurface like the Brahma Samhita or mm. uh, just like Bhakti, you know, becomes fashionable in the 1500s. It came very fashionable and then it sort of like would go underground and then uh, Chaitanya Bhakti replenished and, 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 and went crazy, went worldwide in the 60s. Now we're having another rebirth of Bhakti. It's only it's getting a bigger. New wave. Yeah. It's only getting big. People ask me all the time, well, what do you think of the devotional move? It's getting huge. What do I think about? It? It's getting huge. You, you know, there's just stumbles a little on the way, but it's moving forward and getting bigger. It's moving forward like a, a, a African bull elephant. Okay. You know what I saw yesterday? There's this kid I follow on YouTube on Instagram. He's like four and he is like an Acharya. He's just like he's I don't even understand what he's saying. He's speaking in Maharati or something. Oh, I think I've seen that. I... You ever see him? He's just like giving classes and he's just. <laughs> It's just the Acharyas, the masters are taking birth. <laughs> yeah, yes. This is, uh, we don't even know what we started here. Not just not us, but all the devotees who came got very, very serious about propagating the holy name. We're just throwing out seeds into like fertile soil and some is going to maybe not grow and some is just going to sort of take over the entire garden. Yeah. There's about to be a tsunami. Okay. Yeah, well, let's let's it's going to be based on the teachings of the Bhagavatam. And uh, let's hear a little bit about Prahlad's radical new approach to life. And he's sharing ever, and I kids. heard that expression. Prabhupada said these were going to be the Bhagavatam was going to be the law books. Next 10,000 years for the next 10,000 years. It's a pretty powerful <laughs> statement, like that, isn't huh? it? The law books the law order book. in the court. <laughs> Bring in the fourth canto. <laughs> this seems like this seems like this reminds me a lot of Ambarish. Let's read this passage. <laughs> okay. All okay. Right, you ready? I think we're uh, Next today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, seventh canto, chapter seven. We're milking this chapter. We're spending a lot of time with it because just a lot of great verses. Um, we're, we're on text out. 43, I believe, today, correct? Yeah. What does Mary have to say about that? Yeah. She says yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. A living a living entity desires comfort for his body. Yeah. It makes many plans for this purpose. Mm -hmm. But actually, the body is the property of others. Indeed. Oh. What? Indeed, the perishable body embraces the living entity and then leaves him aside. What an interesting way to look at it, huh? It's, it's a perishable body, right? This body we're having. This body is like a Dixie cup. Right? <laughs> it just uses it. Just, it just, don't think it's some big uh, fired clay mug that you keep on your shelf for 40 years. There's like a dick. It's a disposable plastic bottle, basically. Just you, people just it's, it's just disposed of and it leaves the living entity aside. Well, you, you know, there's two things here that are said here that are both like maybe um, ruffle the feathers or, or it's like when you rub the cat's fur the wrong way. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so, so one is what you just mentioned that this body is perishable and that it's going to be gone quick. Get used to that. Don't, don't identify with it. Don't make your purpose in life built around it because mm -hmm. it's gone. It's, you know, it's going to be crumpled up and tossed into the rubbish bin. You just came back from England, right? That's what they call it there, right? We call it a trash dustbin, the dust dustbin, the dustbin. And toss it in the dustbin. Lay in the dustbin, put it in the boot. It's in the boot. I'm looking in my boot. What, what, there's nothing in boot. my it's in boot. <laughs> so, so that's one thing. But the other thing was this. The, the other thing was that that uh, actually the body is the property of others. Whoa. That's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, I think um, we actually... I think even like the kind of progressive thought, I, I realize that it's, it's necessary nowadays. I'm probably always that, you know, just to, to tell children, you know, like they, they phrase these things just so that the child is protected, you know, your body is your own. And if other people, you know, it's like, you know, just, just as a safety measure, I get that. But I think 
we do, we take it beyond that, <laughs> you know, and we, we kind of live an entire life saying your body is your own possession. It's yours and nobody has. And it's a, it's a different way of thinking that actually this, how about this, rather not, how about this? First of all, with the, we, there's a certain clear logic that because we feel through our own body that the body is ours sure right like say say um say we all just woke say the world worked in a way where like you weren't only born with a body but you're like born with a house and so like everyone's kind of born and like boom you're dropped into a house it would be logical to accept okay that's raganath's house because he was born in that house mm. you know and and you were born in another house so that's your house mm. you know but what what uh, what Bhagavatam is going to say is, but actually, there's not just one person born in the house. There's actually two people in the house, because the Paramatma gets born mm. into every single house, right? Mm. Is mm. is there in every single body? So now there's two conscious beings, not just one person experiencing the body. There's two conscious beings within that body. Okay, well now my ownership is already in question now, right? Like how clear my my argument is, you know, my claim that this is my body. Already, that's been clouded now, but then you add to that a, 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 another layer of of information that actually that other being in the house with us, that other being in the body with us, not only is experiencing this body, but actually all the ingredients were provided by that person, and the design was provided by that person, and the construction was done indirectly under the under the direction of that person. Well, now we're really questioning whether it's my body or not, you know? Right. Or right. is it just something that I was lent? This is, a, this is like a really interesting thing to meditate upon. Yeah. And uh, I think this, com this comes right out of the Krishna book. I think it's Vasudev speaking to Kamsa. Oh, yeah. Right? Like He's just saying, well, actually, it. though, at one point, you know, you could be, an, you can be it, there's an employer that feeds you, basically, gives you money for your, for your services, and he owns your body. He can tell you what to do, or she can right. tell you what to do. Essentially, Are that's you, what happens when we go to work, right? When you go to yeah, work, and you're having, told like what your to body do, is mine have for to the do next it, or else they're going to get rid of us, and we're not going to get any yeah. food. Uh, right, right. So, uh, so that, or, or they say, or the argument is that the parents actually created the body, actually belongs to the parents, or created it, that's it's owned by the boss. It was given to you by material nature, and therefore, it's of material nature. And, right. and ultimately, the elements will go back into the earth. So whose body is it anyway? Yeah, so so even beginning to think like that, for, I think for the average person, it's like, hold it, I don't want to hear this stuff. This body is, my, you know, it's like, it's my no, body no, no. Away from okay, me. but but then understand that where that kind of thinking gets you in the long run, if you actually want to break free from this cycle that mm. you are in of I'm happy one minute, I'm very depressed the next, everything seems okay, then it's not, you know, and, and it's like, seems like there's some pleasure, oh no, there's, now there's pain, and then the pain starts to add up, and then you're just looking at life like it's darker, it's darker, it's darker, it's dark, you well, know, maybe you got to look at it in a completely different way. Well, people sort of lose their free will in their diet, in their exercise, in their self-governance a lot of times. And they sort of get to this point where like, I'm going to take back control. I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to do some push-ups every day. I'm going to do a little yoga. I'm going to do, do CrossFit, whatever it is. I'm going to get back into some breathing and cold plunges, whatever it is. We get into that frame of mind. Like, I feel good. Now I have governance. There's a higher way to think. And the higher way to think is this is God's body. Mm. And therefore, I'm not going to eat healthy for me. I'm going to eat healthy for God because it's God's. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to work out for me so you check out my guns. I'm going to work out because it's God's body and okay, it's well, a gift, well, and I'm going to take care of that gift. Okay, but not so, – so that's a radical different way of seeing life. But what if someone would say, well, hold it. You're talking about some invisible, unseen God. You, you don't have any evidence that yes, this God... I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> you don't have so 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 you're telling me that I should live my whole life based on this idea that there's really no evidence for. No, I'm not. I'm, I, by the way, I wouldn't tell this to anybody. I, I'm okay. telling this to the people on Wisdom and Sages who are interested in a spiritual path. When we start to think like this is God's body, it's a whole new way of thinking. Okay, so so in one sense, you're just saying, well, hey. Here's another option. Consider this and consider if this is 
less rational than your approach. Perhaps it's because well, the other approach gets you out of um, lethargy, but it, it might get you out of lethargy, but it could get you right back into your ego. This is saying, yeah, I, I, matter of fact, I said this on the Rich Roll podcast. I said, if I borrow your bicycle and I trash it, what kind of friend am I? So this has been a gift. The body has been a gift and we take care of it not to cross that line and enter into you know, check out Raja Kapatasana, this pose I could do where I grab my foot and like, oh, I'm not so good at yoga. It's not to impress people. It's actually to purify the body, okay. to cleanse the body because the body is ultimately a gift and I'm born to give back with this gift. Try it. Try it for a week. Try it for a month. Thinking like that, living like that. It's a very beautiful. And therefore, my thoughts are too. What am I going to consume with my thoughts? Mm -hmm. Because this is God's, the, the, the mind is like- a, Mind's a, not yours. A, it's like a garage. And what am I going to put in the garage? Am I going to put a bunch of junk in the garage? Or or like if you're borrowing someone's computer, but like you're going to all kind, kind of like irresponsibly, like going all to all kinds of sites that are full of malware and stuff. They want you like, anyway, it's not my computer. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you hand, back, you hand back the computer and it's like the thing hardly functions anymore. You know, so so the mind is like that. You what know, did like... you download on my computer, Stupa? <laughs> <laughs> check the history yeah so, so, so yeah so it's a, it's a different way of thinking <laughs> you know it's, it's a different way of thinking, but why not consider why not try why not you know and this is what philosophy is for right this is what you know let's think about life in different ways let's consider is this body mine you know is it really mine and if it's not then what's its best use you, and you know it's it's not like this stuff is entirely out of left field because these messages of selflessness, messages of um, the certain ethical messages, you find you find them woven through all different societies in different ways. You know the golden rule and all of that, or or you know the Bible's teaching of um, what is it that the the um, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Mm -hmm. Right, like that that's a message that's very consistent with like your body is not your own, right? You're meant to be using it to serve others, to give to others. And actually that that's the more blessed um circumstance, the more blessed existence is the is the is the um the existence of giving, of thinking of oneself as a giver rather than as a receiver. You are more blessed when you're thinking that way. That's this stuff it's out there. It, we're being prodded to consider it, to ponder it, to experiment with it, you know. Mm. But 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 a lot of times we're just kind of stuck in the mud. We're just kind of you know like like George needed that little prodding from from Jerry. Said try something different. Try you know? a different approach. It, 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 it it's a great. I mean, if you have time to sit and meditate, just you could just think, whose body is this? Mm. Once we start seeing ourselves as spiritual being, inhabiting a temporary body. Then that brings up a whole it. other thing, right? It, yeah. 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 That was from Kamsa and Vasudev, wasn't it? I believe so. I remember him making Chandra arguments knows, like or that. Somebody else knows that. Yeah. In, now, um, in the commentary, Prabhupada has a short, and he's going he's gonna, to um, he's gonna push it for, uh, on, that, on that perishable end. He's going to push that end of it. But he does it bluntly. He's doing it bluntly. You know, we say this this commentary, and let's say the next verse or two. Mm -hmm. They sound pessimistic, but as we've said on the show before, the the spiritualist needs two eyes, right? One pessimistic, pessimistic pointed towards the material world, optimistic pointed towards the spiritual world. Yeah, right? I used to think all the spiritualists were just the cup is half empty, material right. world is miserable and temporary and filled with suffering. Yeah, it took a lot for me to get around that because I was a pretty positive person. Still, I'm pretty positive, right, Mary? Right. Pretty positive. She says she says yes. Um, but it, no, we have to become cynical to the material realm, mm. and we have to really fully embrace that there oh, is, yeah, there's great hope in our spiritual life. I'm fully convinced. All right, let's let's get the 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 pessimistic, cynical eye pointed towards the material world commentary. Hit it on forty three. Here's what we got here. <laughs> Look at you. Everyone desires comfort for his body and tries to make a suitable situation for this purpose, forgetting that the body is, <laughs> here we go, 
that the body <laughs> is meant to be eaten by dogs, jackals, or moths. Moths. And thus turned into useless stool, ashes, or earth. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> You're going to be eaten by a dog. <laughs> Food for the worms. Yeah. The living entity wastes his time in a futile attempt to gain material possessions for the comfort of one body or another. All right. So you know, I had I had when when my sheep, I had a bunch of sheep, but when they died, before I could figure out what to do with the sheep, they were they were just destroyed. They like like animals came out of the forest, and I, I couldn't find the sheep anymore. There was just a pelt lying there. There's just a, a little bit of wool. It, it, it goes. It in goes in other different words, how phases. long did you wait? <laughs> well, it goes. Li, it takes twenty four hours. Twenty four well, hours is gone. Twenty four hours, and different animals come. The first ones to come are crows. And first comes to one of crows, and for, they peck away. No, 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 no. The first ones to come are vultures, and then the vultures get scared away by the crows. Somehow, the crows like scare the vultures away. Sometimes small and, birds, they have ways of attacking big birds that big birds can't attack. They can get behind them and poke, poke. Yeah, them. and just poke and poke. And so, and, and, and then, and then all of a sudden, it, of course, maggots and all these other things come that, you, you know, bugs. But what are the coyote? Well, no, then it goes to either bear. Well, I think bears will eat anything. Bears and uh, coyotes aren't fond of dead animals. You know what other animals come along too? I, raccoons. Squirrels. squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> well, now this isn't a squirrel, my friend. I'm right on right. point with this. Okay. The point, because we don't really think of our body. Well, I'm not going to get eaten by a dog. Well, if you die in your backyard and no one's around, you will. Various... One way or another, even if they buried in a grave, you know, those worms get in there eventually. Some animals get in there and they start eating away. Some, some, some little tiny bugs. That's eat. how it should be. You're organic now. Now no bugs are going to touch us because we're covered in formaldehyde. What a crazy ritual that is! Who yeah. came up with that? Okay, so let's <laughs> contaminate the earth. That's really weird. Okay, I want to be. This makes more sense. Okay, so so mummified. so is this body mine or is it something that's gone very quickly? You know, something is it meant to be used for a different purpose than finding comforts? Is that not only selfish and egotistical and and but is it also like, um, is it also just uh, faulty or, or um, dubious or, or, or you know, uh, prone to, to failure in achieving the goal that I'm trying to, like the happy, the, you see the, the comforts and so on, that's for happiness. Hmm. But does that method, because don't we see the people that actually pull the whole thing off? Like most of us never managed to pull it. Like we get some comfort, not as much as we want, and we get some pleasures, not as much as we want. But the people that go all the way, they don't seem to be any happier. So maybe this type of thinking just, it, it, maybe we got to try this, this other type of thing, the selfless thinking, this I'm not the center of the world, that the body is not even mine, that it's meant to be used for a higher purpose. I don't know if we think like that. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. text 44, Ravanath. Is that, or did we read that one? No, 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 text 44, yeah. Since the body itself is ultimately meant to become stool or earth, right? That's everything just comes back to the earth. So they got to push it, it a little eaten, bit. It's eaten, it gets get eliminated. Graphic, right? They get a little graphic for people to wake up. What is the meaning of the paraphernalia related to the body? Mm -hmm. yeah. Earrings? <laughs> <laughs> Such as the wife, <laughs> residences, your wealth, your children, your relatives, your servants, your friends, your kingdoms, your treasuries, your animals, and your ministers. This is the checklist of material success. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They are all temporary. What more can be said about this? The idea here is we've invested everything in the external. I'm, I'm going to have to bring it up, but I binge watched on the plane the Jeffrey Epstein. And he was a guy. He was a guy who just uh, he had go. every bit of material success. And the interesting thing was because he was such a scoundrel and, and an addict. He was he, he was like a card carrying sex addict. The, and there's a way to live a completely duplicitous life. Like people who knew him were like, oh, he's actually very 
He's very generous. He's very kind. He's very like outspoken. He's char- char- charming where he can have this public appearance of being very facade. You know, yeah. And even when he, he would lure these girls in, he'd be like, I really want to take care of you and you're and your um, help you with your career. And uh, we're going to fly you out to uh, South Africa. We're going to go on a safari. And like, oh, wow, this guy really almost like uh, uh, some benevolent friend. Mm. But there's actually a whole second thing they've actually Agenda. cultivated. It's they, yeah, they're not cultivating it out of love of God and to be a philanthropist and to be kind to people. They actually have a very dark agenda and to fulfill their addiction, actually. And so they come off almost like a sociopath where they have this this split personality. On one hand, they have a public appearance and then they have a very, very private appearance and it starts to unravel. And this is the problem with any type of addiction is you will do anything to satisfy that need, even if it means you might put on a smiley face, a happy face, but you will do anything. But it's really me first, me first. And this is the material world. And this is we say, well, we're not I'm not Jer- you know, I'm not Jeffrey Epstein. But, you know, to the degree that we give in to any passion and that passion's controlling us, it sucks us right into the me first mentality. Mm-hmm. And therefore, the investment just becomes in character, not character, but persona and charm and um, how I can manipulate others in the material world. Maybe it's not, maybe I'm not that charming. Maybe I'll use money. Maybe I use, um, uh, you know, servitude, maybe whatever it is where I can get all my needs met. And uh, when you're going right after one of these, you know, these things that the Vedic give these, the Vedas give these warning signs for like lust or greed or envy. And you really hone in, hone in on one of those things you not just corrupt yourself because people like that, they take themselves down to the darkest of places, but everybody you touch, it's like King Midas in reverse, you know, you're touching and then you're contaminating. It's, it's a a ripple effect of corruption, wherever you go. And -hmm. you see that everybody, people like this have touched, they destroy, they destroy their lives. These people are still devastated by him. You're still going through therapy. <laughs> I think you're going to have to go through a little Jerry Epstein therapy. <laughs> you know what? These th- when you apply Krishna consciousness to all this stuff, those things become like you start to think about how, wow, I get how people who have a lot, who have a lot of power, they can just get, yeah, well, this is normal. I can just get whatever I want. And you can just. No, oh, yeah. You can become. It's, it's the danger of good karma, man. Mm. It's the danger of good karma. And we should just pray that that don't get whatever opulence that we get, never yeah. forget how actually uh, tiny we are and how we have to use everything that we have in a positive way. Or what else. a safeguard, huh? Yeah, yeah. So what Prahlad is sharing here is not, not it's not only like an alternative strategy in life; it's a safeguard. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Let's let's yeah. hit the next text. Was forty five now? Not just an investment in the externals. Yeah, yeah. Tell you all this paraphernalia, right? All this mm-hmm. external stuff is very near and dear as long as the body exists. But as soon as the body is destroyed, all things related to the body are also finished. Poof, poof. Therefore, actually, one has nothing to do with them. Isn't that interesting? We have nothing. nothing to do with even, you know, okay, I, I, I get it. I used to have a bicycle, and I don't have that same bicycle anymore. Where is that nothing bicycle? Nothing to do with We that. actually, but even our family members, that's hard. That's a hard one to digest because I love them. I've invested love and energy, and but. You've you had know. so many. Yeah, I've had so many. I have. I have lifetime after lifetime. Yeah. You know, all it, different species. We have nothing to do with them. <laughs> Continue, please. Oh, you know. Anyway, it's it, it, I have to. You know, I, I can. I can just say, you know, uh, one of my stepsons is like, I've raised, I loved, I have nothing to do with him anymore. I invested so much love in what I felt was a reciprocal love in that relationship, and then I just have nothing to do with him. He just. You know, a kid can, at Time. one point can just choose. And, and if 
and it was the most devastating thing that ever happened to me, truthfully, hmm. when when they just decided not to communicate. And I felt like so hurt and so sad and so betrayed. And unless I add philosophy to this, like they were never mine anyway, ever, even if they were born for me, but they, and, and they weren't. It's helping me but I raised them for little boys. That. I raised them for little boys. Huh? Yeah. And it's helping me understand that. It so helped me. It, it, it gave me at least a little cushion because you know where my mind wants to go? How Ooh. dare you? Yeah, How uh, dare resentment. you? I've done so much. And what I'm finding is that the material world is designed in ways to create a healthier type of love. Like, how can there be love where I'm not expecting some reciprocal transactional love? Can I just learn to love as Lord Chaitanya teaches? It's going to have to be free like of resentment. It's going to have to be free of selfishness. It's going to have to be free of selfishness. Of and, I, and, it, and, and believe me, it was hard. I, but I feel like I, I'm coming to terms with it. And, and, and um, one of my other stepsons came and visited me, and it was very sweet. Um, we had dinner, and then we went out to shoot guns in the backyard. But it was, it was actually very sweet. <laughs> and at the same time, I still can't – whenever the good things happen, you want to get right back into attachment. And then you – but this stuff is important because everything might turn out great and perfect with your family relationship or everything might go so south. You could get betrayed and left and abandoned. And, 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 but w whether it's going great or you get abandoned and betrayed, you don't own any of it anyway. And matter of fact, if it's a very loving family, really connected, it might only. And if you're living in that illusion, like this is mine, this is my it might only be more painful when we ultimately do give up these, the, the, this uh, family unit that we don't possess mm. at the time of death. You know, Raghunath, when Krishna speaks about the sage in the Bhagavad Gita, mm. you know, where their mind is at, how they think, how they speak, how they react to the world, um, and how knowledge is born or thrives in them, Mm. And two times he mentions the exact same three things that are blockers to that or that they've overcome in order to come to this stage. What is it? Vita Bhaya Raga Krota, right? Attachment, fear, and yeah. anger, mm. right? And I think anger, we could also kind of understand that as like resentment, right? Well, uh, Attachment, fear, and, and like, let's say resentment that we don't reach truth. We don't become healthy mm. until we um, overcome these, until we are no longer controlled by these. And, and so like you're saying, here's a life test where you give and you give and you give and you invest with, with your whole heart. Your whole heart. You, you, every, every parent knows this. You yeah. sacrifice the things that you love sometimes to raise the child. Yeah. And, and it, then it seems like you get a pass. Like, OK, you're allowed to resent. You're allowed to. Well, well that, you're here's allowed the thing. to be yeah. bitter. Those those not. thoughts of resentment will rise in the mind. And mm -hmm. unless we're trained, unless we're enlightened, unless we're taught, unless we're given another vision, another radically different way to see the world, then we then the, the tendency will be to embrace those thoughts of resentment because mm -hmm. they, we feel like they're giving they're, they're helping reestablish our truth that I'm a good person. And, and, sure. And, and so this must all be the, the way to understand this is that this is all um, like a, a betrayal of me and my goodness. And sure. And, and it makes you want to be, and make and truthfully, it makes you want to be bad. Oh, yeah. Well, F, you know, screw yeah, them. Yeah, you're right. Because uh, you it's know. justified now. Yeah. yeah. Where, whereas, the, the, the alternative way to look at it is as these thoughts of resentment begin to approach, as, as they rise in the mind, the trained yogi, it's not the fact that the, the thoughts rose in their mind isn't the issue, isn't the problem, isn't evidence that they're not a good yogi. But what they do is they recognize them. Oh, attachment, fear, resentment. These are the, this is what's going to block my truth. This is what's going to block my perception. This is, this is, this is something that these thoughts, rather than embrace them and wallow in them, take shelter of them. Mm. I just let them, I just move them along. It's like, yeah. so, sorry, no, um, we don't 
entertain that kind of thinking in in, in this mind. So you're just going to have to move along now. And it and it's like you just you, you now just, you're free. You're just stewing it. You're just like cooking the <laughs> stew of resentment, of anger. But how could they? And then I also and you remember other things. And I gave up this too. And I and I I, I spent that money for a summer camp. And I and I went sent him to private school. And he went. It was just like one thing after yeah, that's another. That's right. You and you eat away at your heart. Loop and around you, in that forever. Yeah, forever on your and deathbed. You'll never be able to get deeply spiritual. Yeah. And, and, and I tell you, those loops. Bhagavatam, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Dharma is the medicine to break that. Mm-hmm. And it, it's where we lose our peace and we lose our peace of mind. And ultimately, we lose our love of God. We lose Prema Bhakti. If I can't understand that everything's happening for me, not yeah. to me. Yeah. You, and, you, and you learn you you learn to also develop this whole other part of your your consciousness. Like, I wonder what he's going through. I wonder what that kid's going through. You know, oh, I, I wonder. Uh, compassion. And, and you start open, yeah, and, and, and you become compassionate to, to in, instead of resentful, you start to feel for them, and it, it opens up these almost like you have new senses in, in the world, like that you've been blocking at anger, fear. What is it? Anger, fear, attachment, and, and attachment. Fear and yeah. They're blocking the blockers. compassion. They're blockers of the compassion, of the empathy, of the uh, of the love, uh, of the healing, of of the uh, yeah. healthy state. Yeah, you know, and that's Thank where you, that's, Bhagavatam. That, that's where Boom. these positive affirmations actually really become handy. Like like you just said, this is not happening to me; it's happening for me. Like that's a positive affirmation. Sure. I've got two, Raghunath. I got two. What's that, yours? What's yours? Raghunath I've shared them. Me. I've shared. Me. I've shared. Kind of shared them on the show before. One is we don't think like that. We don't think like that. That's a good one. When those resent, hey, the sages, the acharyas, all that 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 sangha that I wish to be a part of and connected to, we don't think like that. That's a I great. One. Let that's that go. And then the second one is for japa. When I'm chanting japa when me- in meditation, which What's is. Yours? No more inattentive rounds, right? No more inattentive rounds because the tendency is to be like, okay, well, maybe this one's going to be inattentive. I'm just going with it. No, no more. Mm-hmm. So, but there has like to be the, a I way. Like that. Yeah, there has to be a way to, um, to gently but firmly, <laughs> right, mm-hmm. move these thoughts along. I'm sorry, we don't we don't accommodate this type of thinking in this mind. Right off the bat, the more the more accustomed you get to 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 saying that affirmation and using that affirmation the quicker it becomes and the less often you actually have to engage it because your mind just starts to become we don't accommodate that thinking in this mind Mm -hmm. move on now you know you're gonna have to i'm sorry there's no space for you here oh man i feel like reading for another half hour but it's over it's 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 over over. (laughs) it's all over okay Uh, okay, good woke up I didn't What's jump in the pond. Question? I was going to jump in the pond. But oh, we did, prana- we, did really prana- we did pranayama outside. It was a beautiful, cool morning. And then, Look at uh, you nature people over here. Yeah. Come join us. <laughs> Come join us. Didn't Mara, didn't I have a nature name for Mara? What was that? <laughs> that was a long time ago. I think. Yeah. <laughs> On the podcast, I had a nature name for she her. She doesn't want to say it. Into- <laughs> you I don't remember, remember it. I don't remember it either. <laughs> okay. You want some takeaways? Please. Please. While we're healthy, let's get serious about our spiritual life. Let's get physical. Open yourself up to going against the grain. Open up. Open up. Think it a new way. Work out and eat healthy to take care of the gift. Okay. Oh, freak out. <laughs> that was a good song. Don't be afraid to turn it all upside down. Turn it up. Okay, we're gonna. I, 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 I tolerated three or four. Love to hear That's, that's a good song. <laughs> I'm born to give back with this gift. Born to give. No. Become give. cynical. Become cynical to the material realm and hopeful for spiritual realm. Let's cynical get cynical. Way. To the degree we're close. Let's get cynical. <laughs> <laughs> to the degree we're controlled by our desires. We're giving in to the me first mentality. Me first and the gimme gimme. Add philosophy to cushion your hurt, betrayal, and heartbreak. Okay. Heartbreak. It's the remedy, right? It's the corrective yeah. measure. Overcome attachment, fear, and resentment for truth and compassion. Mm-hmm. And? 
<laughs> and do the opposite. Flip it. Do the opposite. Flip it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on Zoom. If you want to join us on Zoom, you can. Go to Wisdom of the Stages 108 at gmail.com. If you haven't checked out my new book, Punk to Monk, please get it. Go to Amazon.com or anywhere you get books. You deliver it really quick. Audible. On Audible, it's out on Audible. If you're one of those people that hate to read, like me, you can listen to it. I read it. I read it to you. But you got to do me a favor, people. Go to Audible and write a review. It makes all the difference. Write a review on Audible or write a review on Amazon. And also, while you're at it, go to Apple Podcasts and write a review for Wisdom of the Sages. Um... And uh, we read them all. This way we get to know you. Also, you can share any of these podcasts on YouTube with the friends. Go to that share button. Go to the like, subscribe. Hit that rescribe subscribe bell. The bell icon. And the subscribe. And then comment on the videos. It makes a difference, believe it or not. Huh. we got a retreat coming up at the farm. Wisdom of the Sages Retreat. If you want to see all the retreats that are going on at the farm, go to ragunath.yoga, and there's a whole events list of things going on at the farm, including the Wisdom of the Sages Retreats. Me and Lori Pag got something going on. Me and Nick Haas got something going on. Bobby Marchand is doing a cooking weekend. That's going to be good. Um, yeah, even uh, Brandy Biz and Bhakti Vinod are doing a weekend here. Yeah. Um, beginning of August and also LA Rathiatra we're going to have a Wisdom of the Sages thing going on at Veda Yoga uh, so check that out if you're in LA or thinking about doing a pilgrimage to LA it's the only reason why to have a pilgrimage to LA isn't it you go to Rathiatra and the Rathiatra in LA and New York are both fun 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 remember New York Rathiatra we got a whole table we're going to have a whole Wisdom of Sages thing we're going to ask everybody to make cookies offer them to Krishna no no uh, meat fish or eggs in your cookies especially fish not put fish in your cookies and uh we're gonna distribute prashad and sing we're gonna chant at our table what do you think about that the stuba excellent Raghunath. excellent <laughs> excellent